ಮಕ್ರದುಂಡಮಹಾಕಾಯ ಸೂರ್ಯಕೋಟಿಸಮಪ್ರಭ ನಿರ್ವಿಘ್ನ ಕುರು ಮೇ ದೇವ ಸರ್ವಕಾರ್ಯು ಸರ್ವದ ಸರಸ್ವತಿರಮಸ್ತುಭ್ಯಂ ವರದೆ ಕಾಮರೂಪಿ ವಿದ್ಯಾರಂಭಂ ಕರಿಷ್ಯಾಮಿ ಸಿದ್ಧಿರ್ಭವತು ಮೇ ಸದಾ ಗುರುರ್ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಗುರುರ್ವಿಷ್ಣು ಗುರುರ್ದೇವೋ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಗುರು ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಪರಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೌ ಭುನಕ್ತ ಸಹೀರ್ಯಂಕರವಾವಹಿ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧೀತಮಸ್ತಮಾಧಿಷಾವಹಿ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತ ಶಾಂತ ಶಾಂತಿ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮನೆ ನಮಃ ಅರ್ಜುನ ಉಚ ಅಪರಂಭವಸ್ವತ ಶ್ರೀಭಗವಾಚ ಶ್ರೀಭಗವಾಚಾರ್ಜುನಾರ್ಜುನಾರ್ಜುನಾರ್ಜುನಾರ್ಜುನಾರ್ಜುನಾರ್ಜುನಾರ್ಜುನಾ
then who is Krishna? He must be Ishvara. But if he was Ishvara, how could he have been born? Since Ishvara can never be born. Therefore, Bhagavan Krishna explains all this to Arjuna in the next few shlokas, starting from number six. I was born before, means how, how could Bhagavan have birth? If Bhagavan also has Janma, he is also, he is also a Jiva. He also becomes like a Jiva, having Janma. Janma is therefore Varana will be there. Janma implies samsara. Janma implies karma, papa punya. Janma implies ajnana. Therefore, how could Ishvara be born? Because Ishvara is Ishvara is everything. He is you can is ajaha. He doesn't have janma. He doesn't have janma. Therefore, doesn't have marana. He is nitya. How is that Nitya Ishvara can have this Anitya Janma? Can be subject to this Janma Marana, this Samsara. That is the, the doubt. And therefore, Bhagavan, Arjuna did not ask, but Bhagavan explains. The next important shloka, shloka number six. Ajo Pisanavya Yatma. Ajo Pisanavya Yatma. Bhutana Mishwaro Pisan Bhutana Mishwaro Pisan Prakritim Swamadhishthaya Prakritim Swamadhishthaya Sambhavam Yatma Mayaya Sambhavam Yatma Mayaya Yes, Aham Ajaha Ajaha Means not good. Ajaha is na jayate iti ajaha. The one which is not born, which doesn't have janma, doesn't have birth, is called ajaha. So Bhagavan is ajaha. And it's avyaya, atma. Atma is avyaya. Ajaha, avyaya. Avyaya atma. Bhutanam Ishwaraha. Is a lot of all the beings. Therefore, Ishwaraha, Ishwaro Pisan, though Ishwaraha, but Prakritim Swam Adishtaya. Prakriti is Maya, Maya Prakriti. Having Adishtaya, presiding over Maya, building my own Maya Shakti, Maya Prakriti. Agam Sambhavami. Aham Sambhavami, I manifest. Atma Maya by my, Atma Maya by, here Atma Maya is my, my, it is reflexive. Atma Maya, my own power, I manifest. I am born. So, therefore, it is clear that Bhagavan is not born of Papa Punya. Jiva only is born of Papa Punya. Bhagavan doesn't have Papam or Punya. No karma, therefore, how can there be Papa Punya for the Lord? So, therefore, if all this Jagat Bhagavan could create, why can't he could create himself by presenting over his Maya, wielding his Maya Shakti in any form? He can. It's all possibility. When everything is Bhagavan, the same Bhagavan can appear in any form. As he wishes. It is a vibhuti. The, the, the whole jagat is a vibhuti. And in a particular form he appears. The topic is going to come later. Excess of in fact. Whenever dharma declines, I manifest myself. I assume a body. I assume a sharira. Human shariram sometimes. Animal shariram also. A different sharira. Or mixture of both. So different. Different birth I take. Building my Maya Shakti, Maya, that is Prakriti, my Prakriti, Rama Prakriti, Atma Maya, Avyaya Atma, Atma is Avyaya, or Avyaya can be knowledge also, the knowledge which is not subject to change, that is Atma, self knowledge, Atma Gyanam. Ajaha Pivanto, 
being one who is not born avyaya atma san atma taking to be knowledge knowledge us knowledge that is knowledge about himself doesn't doesn't vain doesn't decline doesn't go ishwara is not is never agyani can never be an agyani like a jiva so <clears throat> therefore ishwara's knowledge is always is therefore avyaya atma the knowledge which doesn't go in fact jiva also jiva also it is as though because of my because of agyanam he thinks himself to be a jiva a limited individual in reality is not individual is not a limited being is atma is brahma and what about ishvara 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 so this prakriti unlike uh, the jiva prakriti upadi ishvara uh, wields its power this maya shakti whereas jiva is under the influence of this shakti therefore jiva is subjected to agyanam and therefore janma marana but bhagavan is not he uh, he presides over the shakti he wields this maya shakti therefore this knowledge never wanes never declines and is the lord of all the beings the fourth swam prakritim adishtaya maya adishtaya presiding over the prakriti prakriti could be prakriti is maya maya is nothing but upadi material material cause for creation maya is a material cause for the creation and maya is ishvara maya cannot exist apart from ishvara maya is ishvara but ishvara is not maya this krishti has got two causes nimitta karana upadana karana both are ishvara nimitta karana is ishvara from the standpoint of the jagat upadana karana is maya which is not different from ishvara maya cannot exist apart from ishvara so therefore material cause we can translate prakriti as material cause i think but maya adishtaya atmaya by my own power atmaya i come into being we see from this shloka that krishna's janma birth is very it's a very peculiar birth indeed being one who is never born as though he comes to comes into being everything is as though it's really as though ajaha api san ave atma bhutanam ishvaro api san api api as though not really also krishna describes himself here as one who is power to know doesn't vain or decline as avyaya atma this avyayam yogam is it here avyaya atma meaning one for whom there is no state of ignorance or delusion avyaya atma the same word abhiyam we saw before abhiyam yogam gaining which there is no coming back abhiyam yogam moksha abhiyam meaning that which doesn't change abhiyam abhiyam yogam proktavan agam abhiyam we saw before this yoga which is not this knowledge which is not subject to decline decline of this which is not sub, subject to vaya change once gained so therefore same abhi atma meaning there is no ignorance for the lord jiva has ignorance but not the ishvara therefore only we say maya maya has its dependence on ishvara maya is ishvara dhinah whereas jiva is under the influence of maya so therefore only jiva is subject to ignorance not ishvara ishvara is also subject to ignorance and he is not ishvara therefore avya atma means the one whose knowledge gyanam doesn't go any time so there is no ignorance for the law we can also say that one who is never born and is not subject to death either that also possible ajaha is never born avya not subject to maranam also there is no change no vikara अपक्षीयते विनश्यति दट षड्विकारा सिक्स फोल्ड चेंजेस अपन टू द शरीरा 
that is not there for the Lord because Bhagavan doesn't have any particular Sharia. Everything is Bhagavan. Therefore, that way also we can take it. Furthermore, he is a Lord of all beings. The one who made the entire creation for the enjoyment of all and the one who introduced and wields all the laws and who is therefore not bound by them. All the laws are the laws of Ishwara. The laws are not different from Ishwara, not something which is operates on its own. So all introduced and it's all wielded by the Lord only. Therefore, we say everything is order. The reason to say. So he made the creation. He created. Therefore, as a creator, he must. As a creator, he must have, he must he himself must have introduced all the laws. So everything functions according to the laws. So there is an order. So who is the wielder of the order? Bhagavan. Therefore, we say order itself is Ishwara. Is also the karma paladata, the giver of the results of action, of the actions of all the jivas. Impartially, he, he gives the karma pala of the jiva. That is why mate karma nevadikaraste, ma paleshu kadachana, ma karma pala hetu guhu. You don't be the author, you are not the author of the result of the karma. Then who is the author, result? Who is the Karma Pradhata? Jiva is not the Karma Pradhata. Jiva, can, Jiva cannot say, Jiva cannot say that I command Karma Pala. Jiva doesn't because Karma Pala, only Karma, in doing only Jiva has, has freedom, but not over the Karma Pala. Karma Pala depends on so many other factors which Bhagavan only knows. Therefore, we say who is the Karma Pradhata? Ishvara. He is the giver of the results of action. And also, when we say the Karma Pala Data is not that by his whims and fancies, he gives Karma Pala. It's not like that. It's all in, in keeping with the order. No partiality in the order. Everything functions within the order. And within the order, the Karma Pala also. So, therefore, he is a Karma Pala Data. The karma, what we do, the result of that, when it will come, Bhagavan only knows. Because he knows our entire history. He has got our entire account. What we have done before and what we are doing now. Therefore, there is the future will be in keeping with in keeping in keeping with our karma. Both what we have done before and now. So so many factors are there, hidden factors. Therefore, Jiva cannot command the result of an action. That is why Karma Niyeva Adhikaraha, you have choice over the choice over it, choice in doing, but not in Karma Pala. You cannot choose your Karma Pala. Karma Pala can be either can be either as you expected or less than you expected or more than you expected, sometimes quite opposite. So all the poss four possibilities. So what factors, influences, which uh, possibility, we don't know. Only Bhagavan knows. Therefore, Karma Paladatta is Ishvara. is a giver of the fruits of all actions. And there will not be error. And there will not be any error in it. Error-free. Error-free distribution of the Karma Pala of the Jivas. Therefore, karma, it's all within the order. Huge order. So many jivas, not only human beings, other beings are there. It's a big network. The network, huge network functions within the order. It is managed by the law. Therefore, the order is Ishvara. He is a karma paladhata. So, therefore, jiva is the cause for the entire creation. Both the subtle world, sukshma prapancha, and the physical world, stola prapancha. Stola, what we see, sukshma is, sukshma we cannot see. So, by stu from this tula, we infer sukshma is karyanamayan. Sukshma is inferred from this tula. So, stula prapancha, gross world is there. 
because gross is there, therefore we infer that must be sukshma. Like the sense objects are there. Sense objects are perceived by sense organs. Sense objects, sense objects are gross, gross sense objects. A flower, a rose flower, it's, it's available for your sight perception. You can see, opening your eyes, you see it. How do you see? How do you see the flower? How do you know that it's a flower? It, you say it is, it is because of eyes. I operate, I open my eyes, I operate my eyes, therefore I see. I open my eyes and see. There are some people, with, they sleep with their eyes open. So eyes, eyes opening, uh, opening the eyes is not the criteria for the sight perception. Even if the eyes open, sometimes flower cannot be seen. The person may be in sleep. The, the person may be asleep with eyes open. Possible. There are people who sleep with their eyes open. So, therefore, opening the eyes or closing the eyes. Closing the eyes anyway, you cannot see. But opening the eyes, one must see that you cannot see. So, therefore, how do we know? How do we know that this is a flower? Because because in the waking state, the eyes are open and, and also behind the eyes there is Indriya, Chakshur Indriya. Indriya is there, therefore eyes see. Blind people don't see. Why? Indriya is Golaka, the physical eyes are there, but Indriya not there. Indriya is the, the ability or the capacity of the ability of the capacity of seeing, making the, the gross organ see. Gross organ function because of indriya. Mere gross organ, sense organ, cannot see the gross sense object. There must be indriya, subtle sense organ, that is chakshur indriya. So we infer chakshur indriya, the presence of chakshur indriya, by our sight perception. Because I see, therefore, we infer that there must be a subtle sense organ behind my physical eyes. Inference. Even the sense organs are inferred. Sense organs, you cannot see. You can see only your gross physical eyes. That too, you cannot see that you have to see with your mirror. What to talk of sense organ, which is subtle. Therefore, sukshma prapancha, sukshma, you have to infer from the karya, because you see, therefore, indriyas are, indri, chakshur indriya is, chakshur indriyas are, two eyes are there. So, therefore, gross world, gross stola prapancha is, from the stola prapancha we can infer, there must be sukshma. So, sukshma is inference, purely inference. Maya prakriti, which is non-separate from Ishwara, that becomes a material cause for this creation. Maya or Prakriti or Pradhana, whatever we call, it is not separate from Ishwara. It doesn't exist apart from Ishwara. Sankhya says it is different. That's why it is Dvaita Darshana. In Advaita Darshana, Maya or otherwise called Prakriti doesn't exist, cannot exist apart from Ishwara. So, therefore, that Maya is the material cause for this jagat. And wielding this Maya, preserving over this Maya, managing this Maya is Shakti. A Shakti of, belongs to Ishwara, therefore is Shakti. He as though, not really as though, as though comes into being in the form of this creation. Since Krishna as Ishwara is on one side of Maya and Arjuna was on the other side, Meaning, Krishna as Ishwara, Arjuna as Jiva. Arjuna could not see him as he was. Arjuna having the spectacle of Jiva, spe Jiva spectacle, and Bhagavan as Ishwara spectacle. Therefore, Bhagavan could see, being Ishwara, but Arjuna could not see. This is like a magician who always keeps the audience in front so that they see only the magic, not the Maya, the duck. And of course, the magician never comes under the spell of his or her own magic. Otherwise, there would be no magician. So similarly, Ishwara also, the whole Srishti is a magic. 
Maya. Because you, a jiva, are within Maya itself, you do not wield it. You are under the influence. You are influenced by. You are controlled by. You are influenced by Maya. Whereas Ishvara does wield Maya. Therefore, the difference between the Jiva and Ishvara is based solely on which side of Maya they are on. Krishna wields the Maya because of which the entire world and its being exist. And being deluded by this Maya, Jiva under being under its spell, being deluded by this Maya, who Jiva, being under its spell, the spell of ignorance, people that is Jiva do not see the Atma, this Krishna Ishvara, do not see the Atma Paramatma. That is Ishvara. While the Jiva doesn't see the Paramatma, but Ishvara has no problem. He can see. He has a Maya under his control. Therefore, he sees. Therefore, Bhagavan knows. Bhagavan me vititani janma itavacharjana tanyakam veda salvani. I know everything. I know all the janmas which you have undergone. You don't know. So that should which side you are. Which side of the Maya you are. You are on. So, Therefore, Bhagavan knows. Bhagavan, Krishna is Ishwara, he knows everything. The idea being conveyed here is that the Jiva doesn't know his real nature, Swarupa. This not knowing one Swarupa is called Avidya, Ajnana. Whereas Ishwara, Krishna can say as he did here, keeping my Maya under my control. I become one as though who has a sharira. That is why we say Maika Sharira. Ishwara Sharira is Maika Sharira. Jiva Sharira is Bhautika Sharira, made of elements and elementals. Made of elementals. Panchabhuta. Element. They undergo grossification process, Panchi Karna. Tattavada. It is discussed. We have seen. So Bhautika. Jiva Sharira is Bhautika Sharira. Ishwara Sharira is Maika Sharira. So, therefore, I become as though one who has a body. This is the de definition of Ishwara, uh, Avatara. This is Avatara. The for Avatara topic comes, the next shloka is going to be the Avatara topic. So, it's an, it's an introduction to that. This is the definition of an Avatara. I become as though one has a body. Iva. Iva. Janma. As though born. I take Janma as though, not really. If it is real, then it then he must be under the influence of Maya. Therefore, Eva, the word Eva as though is a very big thing. In the whole Advaita Vedanta is built on this Eva Shabda, Eva only, as though only. Mitya, not really. So this is the definition of an avatara. When it is said that an avatara is one who comes down. Should not, it's not literally who comes down. It is as though comes down. If he comes down, means he must be locating in a place from where he steps down, comes down. But Ishwara is not located. If he's located, then he becomes Parishchinna, limited, and therefore he is also another Jiva, maybe an exalted Jiva. That's all, nothing more than that. Therefore, when we say it descends down, comes down, it is as though he comes down. The whole Jagat is Ishwara. So from there he, he will come down. Therefore, there is no really coming down. It is all as to only giver, giver. Okay, then. So therefore, who comes down? What is meant is that he assumes a body. He as though as a body. As though because he is not lost in the body. In other words, he doesn't take himself to, the, to be the body. A Jeevan Mukta, one who is liberated, can also say, I as though have a body. Therefore, there is no difference between Jnani and Ishwara. Jnani to Atma Yavim Vatam Ishwara. Bhagavan says later. A Jeevan Mukta, one who is liberated, he also can say as though, I have a body. So, therefore, because this person knows the real nature of I, the Atma, therefore he says, as though I have a body. 
to be able to say this requires knowledge jnanam and to acquire this knowledge one has to be living that's why jivan this is why the person who has such knowledge is called a jivan mukta liberated while living living is liberated and before this knowledge takes place the jiva comes into this world as a result of the past karma like any other jiva by the force of karma meaning one's past actions and and the results a physical body along with the mind and senses we call upadhi is created with a parentage and and at a time and a time and place born at a particular time and place and we can say that the person is born so born with a body physical body mind and senses are for bhautika bhautika shariram such a person is called a jiva his birth has got a cause his purva karma the results of his previous action becomes a cause for this janma this particular shariram particular parentage in particular country place etc particular time only by acquiring the knowledge that e or she is param brahma only by knowing that agam atma brahma can the jiva be free of the cycle of birth and death that is samsara chakra and all that goes with it knowing this the person is free only by knowing that agam atma brahma i don't have janma i, I don't come and i don't go no janma no marana aham brahma jagat karanam brahma only by knowing that only the person becomes free but the body continues because of the force of prarabdha the body continues this janma continues because it is the creation of ishvara ishvara srishti this and it is ishvara srishti in the ishvara srishti after gnanam a jivan mukta the gnani continues to live his body doesn't fall immediately after gnanam because of the prarabdha vasha force of the prarabdha he continues to live continues to live till this sharira has got karma sharira the karma which is sharira exhaust he is gnani he is not affected by the karma but the shariram shariram has to continue for some time because of the force of the prarabdha that is ishvara srishti it is something like when we switch off the fan the fan doesn't come to stop immediately it rotates for some some time and then stops the momentum is the like the momentum of this janma in spite of gyanam continues that is ishvara srishti because it is a creation of ishvara ishvara srishti omniscience doesn't require a mind sarvagya sarvagyatvam knowing all bhagwan knows everything and like jiva who knows who knows not everything who knows an object or a vishaya at a time he cannot know everything simultaneously all the knowledge doesn't appear in his mind simultaneously at a time he can even he can speak only one language at a time only one vritti comes in the mind only one thought that thought goes another thought comes because its antakarana is designed so what about the antakarana of ishvara what about the antakarana of the ishvara which is the prakriti the bhaya which is unlike jiva it is not one at a time all knowledge available all the time that is why omniscient the word omniscient has to be understood what it is bhagwan is called omniscient omnipotent because he has no all knowledge all the time so the omniscient doesn't the for omniscient doesn't require mind at all thus krishna tells arjuna here that as ishvara he keeps the maya under his control his powers jnana shakti the power to know the kriya shakti the power to do and icha shakti the power to desire the three fold shakti cha shakti gnana shakti kriya shakti they are not limited in any way 
since its power to know is without limitation, therefore it doesn't require antakkarna, a mind to know. So, therefore, antakkarna is limited. Ishwara, Ishwara doesn't have antakkarna. He knows all, all the time. Without antakkarna, it doesn't require a mind. mind. Without the mind, he has all knowledge. So, all knowledge implies no mind. Unlike jiva, it doesn't have a mind. Mind is limited. At the time, only one vritti can come. One, only one vritti can pass through the antakkarna. Whereas all knowledge, omniscience, when we say, that cannot depend upon a given mind because any mind will have some limitation. Furthermore, the mind itself is a creation. And before creating it, the Lord must have knowledge. Therefore, therefore no mind is required by Ishwara. The very Maya itself make him omniscient. Yes. He is called Parameshwara. And this Parameshwara alone becomes a world. This is a Maya. The trick of it all. All these are the, the topics. The, the Top, the important topics of the topic which are connected to the Ishwara. To understand Ishwara, these, this, these details one has to know, these, these things one has to understand. So it is Ishwara is, Ishwara has no mind but still he knows. Ishwara has no mind but still he is omniscient. And he is all powerful, all powerful because of Maya, Maya Shift. And Maya is under his Vasha, therefore he can incarnate as he likes, as he wants. And in that incarnation is as though not real. His Janma doesn't have, his Janma is uh, his Janma not because of Papa Punya. His Janma not because of Papa Punya. So he can. Take any Janma, unlike Jiva, who is born of the past karma, Papa Punya, he can take any Janma, any form he can take. And Ishwara Sharira is Maika Sharira because made of Maya directly. Like in Tattva Bodha Visa, from the Maya comes the five elements, five elements, from the five elements, the compounding happens, then Panchikarnam, then elemental elementals come and and Sukshma Sharira, Sukshma Sharira also, that is uh, from the individual Panchabhuta. The sense organs are born, then Karmendriyani and Jnana Indriyani, Buddhihi mind, and Panchaprana, etc. Then these uh, elements undergo grossification process from that physical elements, gross elements are born, and uh, the human Shariram, etc. But Ishwara doesn't have all this process. Directly from Maya, he can he can manifest himself. That is Ishwara. This is a, a topic uh, only discussed in, in the Gita, not in the other text Upanishad and all. So here, that's why this uh, this avatar topic is a unique topic. It's a special topic in Gita. So Vyasacharya presence here, Krishna as Ishwara, is as Avatara, Krishna Avatara, as Avatara. Avatara as Avatara is Ishwara. Avatarati. He descends down, comes down as to. So therefore, then he can manifest himself as his entire Jagat. What problem he has to incarnate in particular form? That form is Maika Sharira. He can appear and he can disappear also. Rama Avatara, Rama born as a, he comes into being as a baby and he, was, he slowly grew up, became a king, etc. That is Rama Avatara, even Krishna Avatara. But Narsimha Avatara is not like that. Suddenly he appeared from the pillar and he killed Hiranyaka Sipu and then disappeared. There are Avataras, manifest and disappear. That particular, that incarnation has got a purpose. So manifest and then disappears. So one, therefore, that one, that as avatara one need not born as a child and then grow up and become. Rama avatara is a special avatara where Ishvara chose to chose to he chose to come as as a, born as a being, human being, and grow up, grow up also. Therefore, 
as a child, then grow up, became an adult, and then he ruled the kingdom, etc. Similarly, Krishna Avatara also. Therefore, therefore, those are two Avataras. Therefore, only two Avataras we talk about much because we glorify the two Avataras. Rama Avatara, in fact, we glorify because as Ishwara, Rama did not manifest any special powers. But in, in Krishna Avatara, you can see Krishna as Ishwara manifesting some special powers. But in Rama Avatara, it's not. That is why in Ramayana, Valmiki presents Rama as a being, human being, as that our human being should live, should conduct his life in the world. So, taking Rama as an instance, he presents in the Valmiki Ramayana. When Sita was when Sita was abducted by Ravana, Rama cried like a the normal human being cries. Rama cries. That's a natural for a human being. So, like a human being, Rama also cried. So, this this uh, pain due to separation, etc. So, all these are depicted in the Valmiki Ramayana. So, Valmiki presents himself as a being, human being, as a human being endowed with all the virtues. So, in order to make the people follow him, follow, emulate his virtues. That is the idea. So, therefore, Ishwara is Sarvajnaha, is Sarvashaktiman, is not limited. Therefore, having Maya under his Vasha, he can assume any form as he wishes. That depends on the time, the place, that depends on the situation. And another thing is, what makes a, an avatara, what, what makes Ishwara come, a descend down, come as an avatara? The prayer of the devotees. Samashti prarthana of the jivas becomes a nimitta karanam for Bhagavan to incarnate himself. Samashti prarthana. When beings are in trouble, when beings are, when beings are in, in problem, like when they are tortured by the Asuras, like uh, the Kamsa in, in Krishna Avatara, or Ravana in Rama Avatara, or Irenika Sibu in Nasim Avatara, there are always some demons, forces, some negative forces. When their force, when their strength increases, and then the people suffer under their influence, they pray to the Lord, and Bhagavan descends down as, descends down in a, in a form he is inspired, is invoked and protects them. So that is the, the avatara, topic of avatara. It's a unique and a special topic. It is uh, discussed only in Gita. As Vedantin, we can say everything, everything is Ishwara and we are also incarnation in this being. But only thing is, we are bound by karma. We are also incarnate. As Atma, all are all are same. There is no difference. So, we are also born because we are also in, incarnate. Everything is Brahma, Atma. Therefore, where is the difference? There is no difference. So, we are also in, we are also in form, incarnated form only. As we saw, Jivan Mukta is Jivan Mukta is Jivan Mukta is, is Jnani. For him, there is no there is, uh, in spite of having the body, he doesn't have the Sharira Vimana. He knows that this body is Mithya. He is one with Atma. So, therefore, that body is Avatara for him. That body, after that body of that, that uh, Jnani, that is Avatara. So, therefore, for uh, everything is Avatara. Everything is, an in, everything is incarnated from the Advaita standpoint. But as special avatars, a special incarnation, you can call these beings, uh, Ishwara, as special incarnations. So this is the, the topic here. And it is going to be discussed elaborately. And the following shloka also. 
the following shloka shows the the purpose the purpose of the Ish ishvara avatar purpose of avatar why does ishvara incarnate why does ishvara incarnate what is the nimittam why does he incarnate and what does he do incarnated what does he do that we will see we will see in the next class Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamada Chate Purnasya Purnamadhaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Arihi Om Shri Guru Pyo Namaha Arihi Om Dhanyavadaha